So I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I enjoyed the episode. I really did. And I know that because there weren't a whole, there wasn't a whole lot of drama and stuff like that, that a lot of people would think that this episode was boring. I personally do not feel like it was boring. I actually enjoy watching the doctors sitting with patients and talking with them. I learned a lot and I think it's very interesting. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, Dr. Jackie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, I, I got I got some things I want to say about that. But overall, I thought the episode was okay. But I do know that other people probably think that this is another boring episode. And they probably think otherwise. But I actually, I enjoyed it. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. Hey, y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle and this is The Belle Perspective. And I'm coming at you with another review for Married to Medicine. This is season 10, episode 10, a very powerful message. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I talk about books, TV, movies, all kinds of things on this channel. If you're returning, welcome back. Okay, you already know the drill. Get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about the episode. And don't forget to like this video before you leave. Let's get into the review. So we open up the episode where we see, you know, all the girls doing their thing. You know how Bravo likes to do. You know how they like to do, okay? We see Dr. Jackie kicking in with another colleague about a patient. And y'all, ever listen, it is what it is. We ain't never going to forget about it. Dr. Jackie will forever get the side eye from me, okay? We also see Dr. Simone meeting with a patient. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, just in just a little bit. We see Dr. Alicia with her husband. Y'all, I, I see what they're trying to do with this man. I feel like what they're trying to do is incorporate a little bit of the Love and Marriage Huntsville storyline. You know how Marcel, for those of y'all who watch Love and Marriage Huntsville, and I do review that show, shameless plug, okay? For those who watch Love and Marriage Huntsville on own, Carlos King production, there are several men, most all the men on that show, except for like one or two of them that are just very much women are below men, men are the dominant, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel like they're trying to go down that road. And I'm just like, we, we, I don't want to, I don't want to see this y'all. I'm tired. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see it. I really don't. But you know, anyway, that's where we are. <laughs> this is what we've got. Anyway, we see Dr. Alicia, she she is nursing her child and y'all, I'm not a mama and I don't have no kids and I don't want none. I say that all the time, but I was looking at that child. I was like, how big is that child? Is he like five? But then I looked at him again. I'm like, okay, maybe he's just, maybe he is a baby, but he's just big for his age because she's still breastfeeding. How, how, how long, like what's the cutoff for breastfeeding y'all? Like for real, again, from one woman who I ain't, you know, I don't have no kids and I don't want none. So please educate me because I don't know nothing about that. So anyway, so Toya and Dr. Simone sit down to meet and I'm like, what kind of friendship? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, Toya and Simone are friends. Okay, uh, y'all, first of all, first of all, we sitting down, Toya already complaining about Eugene, and I'll get that, I'll get into that in just a second, and I, I do understand that I don't want, what I don't want it to come off as black women should not be able to ask for more, that's not what I'm saying, right, so in my last review when I talked about Toya needing a life, I don't want to come off as black women aren't able to ask for more, black women should absolutely ask for more if they want more, and they deserve more if they want it, if they ask for it, right? My thing is, I'm looking at it from a, I've been at work all day and to come home and to hear you complaining about stuff, that's, anyway, let me, I'll get into that in just a second. Let us let me talk to, to y'all a little bit about Toya and Simone, quote unquote, friendship. I was, Dr. Simone came down, sat down and was trying to talk about her day a little bit and Toya immediately shut her down and was like, girl, I don't know what the hell you talking about, girl. Let's move on and talk about something else. How is that, like, how are y'all actually going to have a sustainable friendship when you won't even let this lady talk about herself and what she's dealing with her day? And even if you don't understand, why not Google it and at least show some sort of interest? And, And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I know that that's how she does Eugene. It's like, how are you supposed to be in this world with these doctors and these professionals but you don't want to know nothing about what they doing and what they do throughout their day and you just want them to cater to you all day like that's really I said Toya girl this is the root of your problem okay so then you know Toya for the 10th season gets into how Eugene is not catering to her and not you know planning dates and all this other stuff and Simone gives her some you know a little bit of tea that Eugene shared with Cecil and Eugene basically said I'm scared to plan anything for her because she's so critical and quiet as it's kept exactly that it makes that's what I was talking about it's like girl 
Toya need a job. And I know some of y'all disagree. I know some of y'all think that, you know, you need to have a, you know, there's a, there's a longing that you have for your husband that no friendship can honestly, when you work all day, if you have a real job and you're actually working and you're doing things, the need to constantly be trying to go out and do stuff, that's that, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but you, you, you have more of a realistic approach to things. Once you have a real job, I'm for real y'all. Like, let's be for real. Now, again, it's nothing wrong with asking for more. Okay. But I just don't think that this is the case. I don't think that this is the case with Toya. I really don't. I think Toya is just self-centered and really wants everything to be about her and how things can, how she can benefit from whatever it is, whatever is going on. That's what I truly, truly think. And again, Eugene has tried to plan things for her, but she's so damn critical. And again, like you're with a man that is intelligent. He's an intellectual man. Okay. He planned the trips to South Carolina to do some sort of history tour. Girl, what kind of, what, what do you want to do, Toya? <laughs> what do you want to do? Go shopping? Like, what do, What does Toya want to do? Th this is where I'm looking at Toya like, girl, okay, girl. Anyway, this is the man you married, okay? This is the man that you married. This is who he is. I'm not saying settle for less. I'm not saying just, you know, take whatever he can give you. No, but I also want Toya to be realistic about, what she's asking for, for real. Okay, so we see all the doctors in their element. We see Dr. Simone, we see Dr. Jackie, we see Dr. Heavenly, we see Dr. Jackie. And y'all, this scene was so fucking cringe. I'm not gonna even hold you. Dr. Jackie was telling this lady that she has the body of a 26 year old. Dr. Jackie was telling a patient, right, who has a breast cancer survivor that this, this thingamadoob or whatever mechanism that they've used to measure your body, they can measure your body fat and all the functioning elements of your body and then get basically guess your age, your body's age. And Dr. Jackie was basically bragging saying that she has the body of a 26 year old. I said, Dr. Jackie, this is not about you. This is not about you. And then they turn and then she turned around and tell this lady that she obese and that she needed to get her shit together. I'm like, this, <laughs> I thought they BMI scale wasn't even realistic for people. I thought we weren't even using that anymore. If, if y'all, any nurses, doctors, healthcare professionals that follow me, please get in the comments and tell me what's going on. Because I was looking at Dr. Jackie like, we still using BMI? Y'all still using that as a form to, to try to like measure obesity? Because girl, like for real? Anyway, I you know what? <laughs> and another thing, I feel like Dr. Jackie always around somewhere telling somebody that they fat. Like I'm not even trying to be funny. That's how she did Buffy. And that's when I really started looking at Dr. Jackie like, mm, okay. Anyway, I Dr. Jackie forever gonna be the, getting this side eye out. Dr. Heavenly was meeting with T.S. Madison. I thought I felt like this exchange was a little bit weird as well. I still feel like there's a little bit of homophobia with Dr. Heavenly. I'm not gonna lie to you. T.S. Madison talks about how, you know, black people don't respect trans people and things like that, especially black trans people. And I would have to agree. I think that we get into a society where we're in a society where if you're not white, man, male, you're not white, male, straight, Christian. And what's the other? Rich, I guess, maybe economically sound or whatever, you're pretty much at the whim of who, everyone who falls into those categories. And I think because that is the playbook running at the in the back of our society, I feel like we're all at a rush to try to hurry up and claim whichever category we can complete, whichever category we we of, that we we uh, can comply with, right? So men lead into the conversation that we have a little bit later on. Dr. Alicia's husband, he's a man. He's going to stand 10 toes down in his manhood because he knows that he can use that to try to like further oppress people to me. That's what it sounds like. And I don't want to say oppress, but further wield. What, what am I saying? Further impress his quote unquote dominance as a male. Because again, it's the five categories. This male is you know, white, it's Christian, it's uh, heterosexual, and then, you know, rich or whatever. So I just, I still feel like black people are at a mad rush to try to, well, at least I'm not gay, right? Or at least I'm not poor. Well, or, well at least I'm not a girl, right? Or at least I'm straight. Like, anyway, y'all get down in the comments. Let me know if y'all know what I'm, if you understand what I'm talking about, because I'm, I'm kind of all over the place with that. But I appreciate T.S. Madison. 
But I just didn't think that this was the setting for it because it kind of felt edited and weird. I don't know. But I but I do understand what she's saying. And I do think that she is 100% right. Then we get to Dr. Simone. Dr. Simone is talking to a patient who is over the age of 44 who is interested in trying to have a baby. And she talks a little bit about the likelihood of this patient of potentially having a child with um, more chromosomes than, than necessary. And... Um, you know what? They go into the the conversation about, uh, how do I say this? I'm trying to, A-B-O-R-T-I-O-N, okay? They go into the conversation about that. And I completely forget that doctors actually have to deal with this type of fact every single day because of the, the laws that have changed and the things that have been rolled back, right? And it's crazy. It is so crazy. I mean, again, I I... I knew it was going to affect people, but I, it's so close. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, damn, it's right here. And it's already affecting people right now in this very moment. Oh God, earth is so ghetto. Anyway. Okay. We see Toya and Eugene take the boys to go get an orthodontic appointment. I love seeing black dog. I love seeing black professionals, y'all. I love seeing black professionals. Their orthodontist is a black orthodontist my my orthodontist when I had braces he was a black doctor as well this one I think this doctor he went to Howard as well and um I just actually damn quiet as this kept my doctor went to um Howard too okay come on shout out to um um Howard anyway love to see it uh Letitia and Dr. G go and we already know she's got endometriosis we already know she's got to get surgery Dr. G's there just to kind of sit with her to confirm the diagnosis and my thing is, Letitia, you should have never led. You should have never dropped your uterus in a DM selling some man that you could basically be a baby factor. Like, I was like, girl, you started off wrong, girl. Like, ugh. I don't I don't have nothing else to say about this because, girl, you started this. Like, this is how you started the relationship with your husband, telling him that you could produce a baby for him as if you're a baby factor and that's all you're good for. Girl, that's on you, dear. And now here you are just billowing with pressure because that's the position you put yourself in. Girl, it's crazy. Uh, girl, uh-uh. Anyway, Simone and Cecil, they go to see the boys. And y'all, okay, don't get me wrong. Now, listen, I'm, I'm a little older. I'm a little older. Okay, I'm just a little, little older than Michael and Miles. But um, Michael, he is cute. Michael looked like he got some business by himself. Miles... <laughs> No. And did y'all see that tattoo on, on Michael leg? He has like a whole, like, it's not a sleeve, right? It's not a sleeve if it's on your leg. I don't know what you call it, but he got a tat all up his leg. I was like, come on with the tat on your leg. Okay. If I was a little young, you know, a little young somebody, I'd probably be talking to Michael. He seemed like he got some business about himself. So I'll come over there with the black light. Girl, why would you even want to know? That's, no, I would not be doing that. That's like, that's an invasion of privacy one. It's also nasty. Like, I don't want to see what my, mm -mm, I don't want to see what my sons is doing. Not like that, like that. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Just make sure you watch. Now, I don't want, if my eyes can't see it, I'm fine. I'm not taking no black light. That's nasty. Ugh, so that mean they're not washing their sheets like they should? That's disgusting. Anyway, we get to the PSA commercial. This is where Dr. Jackie has decided she is going to wrangle up all the Merit to Medicine women and they're going to do a PSA commercial about, um, maternal mortality rates in the nation again we side on dr jackie because girl while you're saying you're here for your patients you have also mentioned that you feel like black women complain the most especially your black women patients who are expecting complain a whole lot and be wanting to get time off and they try to they're over dramatic about their pain and all the other things that they that you know that contribute to exactly the reason why maternal mortality rates in the in the country are high yeah okay so anyway Chaddy cutting up and acting a fool down in this um little commercial thing. And the man who's doing the producing, he was looking like, oh my God, what the hell going on? Simone yelling, fighting for the chair. And Toya fighting for the chair. And she ended up kicking all of them out. And this is where Letitia tells them that she basically got endometriosis and, and strichomonosinosis and uh, <laughs> vaduocodidosis and all that other stuff. Child, just, it, it, she, she tore up on the floor for right now, right? And I'm not trying to be insensitive, but also, girl, you let with your uterus in a dm girl so anyway she got all these issues and she gonna have to get surgery it's unfortunate but 
you know, this, this is what it is. Then we cut to the men. The men are going to a cigar bar and they are sitting around listening to Dr. Alicia's caveman husband. I don't even remember what his name is. I don't care at this point. It doesn't even matter because girl, why? <laughs> like we, you are too intelligent to me. Like you, okay. I can see this type of rhetoric from a man who doesn't have a lot of education, doesn't have a lot of life experience, but to hear a man who is educated, who has life experience, who, while yes, he may be young, I still, boy, what the hell wrong with you? Like, <laughs> like, all right, what the hell wrong with you? Do you, do you want you, what? Cause to me, to me, he sounds like what a white man would say. And, and follow me when I say this. Okay. It's like, you know how they did that, um, that alt-right march in, um, South Carolina, that all right, I think it was like in 2017. Was it in Virginia? Well, not South, no, not South Carolina. It was like it was in, what, in Virginia, Charleston, Virginia. I think it was. Was it? I don't know where it was at, but it was in 2017. They did the alt right and they went down with their tiki torches and they was like, "You not, you will not replace us. You will not replace us." You know, carrying marching on and carrying on, right? That's what it sounds like. He, it sounds like he feels like him as a man. He feels like women have replaced his dominance and he needs to reinsert his dominance as a man, but insert white, right? Because it sounds really very much put women back in their place. You will not, men, women will not replace men, put women back in their place. Men need to take their place again. What was their place though? Like, and what are you talking about? And all the men were looking at him like, boy, okay. <laughs> like, this is not the time, sir. This is not the time. I know you was born in Nigeria. I know you grew up in Jamaica, boy. Take that, take that back down there. <laughs> take that back down there because this is not this is not where you at right he goes and he says you know i'm from the old school and he says women have been running things for too long what women what what have women been running dear thank god for dr eugene this is why dr eugene is a good man savannah dr eugene was like okay women <laughs> logical <laughs> let me let, let some logic come up in here right so when there's a there's a pay gap right there's pay gap with women okay women do not get respected as much as men they're not offered as much as they are for men in terms of like work or opportunities right there are still more CEOs, male CEOs than women, okay? Much more men who own multi-billion dollar businesses than women, okay? And that's just white people, okay? So let's even look at how it is when it when we stratify this and look at black folk. Like, no, black men still make more than black women. Y'all, you still... <laughs> and, and that's just from an economic aspect, right? Let's talk about the social aspect, okay? Let's talk about how women have to take, we were just watching on Real Housewives of Potomac last week how Giselle wanted to take Grace to go down to do self-defense classes. Men are offing women at a number, like we have to, like my grandma used to always tell me, don't walk around, don't walk down the street with both headphones on. At least keep, if you have a headphone on, keep one in your ear, keep your other ear open and keep your head on the swivel. You never know when some man might try to come out of the bushes and come after you. Like, what is he talking about? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, sir, what do you want? Do you want women to go back and be in the kitchen? So no, you don't want equality. You don't want, you want us to be under you is what you're saying. And I think that that is the, the most, like, ill and dr alicia i'm like girl you married him this is what you married girl you thought this was good for you but you know and, and no shade to anybody who you know feels like or agrees with him that's fine but if you're gonna marry somebody marry somebody who agrees with you don't marry somebody who thinks totally different than you because that's dumb because dr alicia is not that type of woman she's very vocal she has her opinion she is a doctor for pete's sake and you sitting up here talking about women need to take a back seat and all this other foolishness like quiet as it's kept in your world women wouldn't even be going to school oh child i <laughs> praise god for dr eugene baby i don't know what that boy said but he got dr damon activated actually i do know what he said but baby he got him activated okay he said yeah you know some i, I refuse to let my nutsack be cut off dr damon was like excuse me are you trying to imply that the us here the, the men over here nutsack cut he was like no 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 i ain't trying to say that i ain't trying to say that's exactly what you said boy that's what you said boy okay and everybody was looking at him like oh son <laughs> <laughs> let's see how far this gets you like like be for real though like be fucking for real in in the year of our lord in 2024 nigga you still saying this stupid shit right here you don't you don't think that 
a women, a woman being equal to you is not beneficial. He was like, e- everybody, all of us can't lead. It's not about all leading at the same time, you dummy. Like again, you are. Did you really go to school? Who at school? Did, who taught you? Okay, because this is dumb. This is dumb. No, it's not everyone lead at the same time because that's not how that works. It's who is stronger in this area? That person leads, okay? Who is strong in this area? That person leads. Because guess what? CEOs and companies, they're not the ones leading everybody, making all the decisions everywhere. No, there's a CEO, there's a COO, there's a CFO, there's a CRO, there's a CPO. Like there's all kinds of C-suite people who help lead the charge. And the person that's strong in one area Okay, we'll take the charge for that. And then they switch off. Like if, if you're in a healthy co- uh, company, child, he is, you you went to school? Like, I'm just so shocked to hear someone who's educated saying something like that. I'd expect to hear that from somebody who's not that educated, right? Who hasn't traveled the world, who doesn't have a lot of sense of what's going on in the world. But, and it's always very disheartening to hear black men say this kind of stuff. Cause it's like, sir, if you replace, woman with black you will sound you're the same it's the same talking points of a white nationalist it really is the same talking points if you replace woman with black people or black men it is literally the same talking points as someone who is a white nationalist like for real like i anyway and it's crazy to me that they can't even say that they can't even see it when they're saying it right replace replace the word transgender Okay, with woman, and it's still the same talking points, y'all. Replace any marginalized people group with what he was saying, and it's still the same talking points of somebody who is a homophobic, racist, whatever. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Y'all get down in the comments and let me know what you think. I know y'all probably, I know y'all probably think this episode was boring. It was good to me. I thought it was okay. I really did. Now, I know that it could be better. I've seen much better episodes, but. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was bad at all. I liked it. Anyway, get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about the episode. Don't forget to like this video before you leave. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.